It is easier to know what someone's microbiome looks like by looking at their VO2 max and fitness level than it is to look at their diet. Meaning I could literally look at exactly what someone is eating and it would not tell me as much as just knowing what their fitness level or VO2 max is. That is how closely tied in with performance our microbiome is. Yet we continue to just kind of like forget about it. I've got a few studies to share with you, one of which is earth shattering, brand new stuff, all right? But I have to kind of lead up so the video makes sense. First one I want to reference is published in the journal Nature. This study was interesting because it looked at a specific strain, but let's get into it. What they did is they took marathon runners that were leading up to a marathon and they compared them to an inactive control group. Okay, and what they did is they took stool samples of each group each day for the week leading up to a marathon. And what they found is that the marathon group had a higher instance of a specific species called Velanella. Okay, now Velanella, yeah, that's an interesting species and that's cool, but that could just be chance, right? It could just be chance that the runners had more of this specific Velanella. So what this study did is it said, well, let's go and let's look at some other athletes. So they looked at Olympic rowers, they looked at some other Olympic runners and they found, hey, well, I'll be darned. These guys have the same abundance of this bacteria, Velanella. So let's dive into what that means. Well, it turns out that Velanella is an interesting bacteria because it specifically can feed on what is called lactate. Have you ever heard of lactic acid before? Have you ever heard of like felt that burn when you're working out? Well, that is generally associated with lactate, lactic acid, right? Not the same thing, but kind of, right? So in essence, what they've uncovered is that this Velanella feeds on the byproduct of exercise. So when we exercise and we create this lactate, it gets through the gut and it feeds this bacteria and this bacteria flourishes. Okay, well that's cool and all. So we know that people that are athletic have this one particular bacteria that's really cool. What does that tell us? Well, guess what? So they took that kind of bacteria, that Villanella, and they gave it to mice. They infused mice with it. And these mice saw a 13% improvement in their running times. So that literally means, at least as far as that mouse study is concerned, that this Velanella, this bacteria that is high in people that are athletic and has a high abundance in people that are athletic, directly has an effect on performance. So it's not like we just get this bacteria because we're working out. No, that bacteria has a benefit on us too. So then we have to kind of look at, all right, well, how do we as athletes or how do we as people that are trying to get more performance or do better in the gym, how do we capitalize on this? It does come back down to diversity because the reason we lean into diversity right now is because we are just learning the entry level stuff with all these different species that we know of. So right now it's safer to say, have a good diversity of bacteria because then you're multifaceted and multifunctional. Obviously there's things you can eat to get diversity, things like that. Of course, getting good amounts of fiber, supporting short chain fatty acid production, all that, which I'll talk about more. You're probably wondering a little bit what probiotic I would recommend in this case. The probiotic I would recommend is down below. It's called Seed and you could use code THOMAS15 and save 15% off. Seed is what we call a daily symbiotic because it contains a prebiotic and a probiotic. Really, really interesting technology. So they're supporting this channel a lot because I've really taken an interest in their research. Okay, they are on the forefront and really making sure that they're putting their best foot forward. But their technology, as far as a product goes, is intriguing. It's definitely the best probiotic I would recommend. So it's got a capsule inside of a capsule. So look at kind of the footage here. You can see a little capsule inside a bigger capsule and that ensures better delivery. So that way we're, we're working to get that colonization the best that we can. So they're just an interesting Interesting company because they're really doing a lot of research, but they're also pioneering a lot of really good movements in the world of the microbiome. So we're going to be doing a lot more content together, but either way, probiotics are something that I highly recommend and seed is just a whole nother level when it comes to probiotics. So check them out. Check out the daily symbiotic from seed 15% off using that code and using that special link right down below in the description. But let me keep teaching you a little bit more so it all makes sense. There was another study that was published in the journal Microbiome, and this one looked at VO2 max. This is the one that I kind of opened the video with. Okay, so this took a look at 39 people. Okay, and these 39 people were uh, all matched for age, they were matched for BMI. 
but they all had different fitness levels. They all had different VO2 max. That's how much oxygen you can use when you're working out. Okay, so different fitness levels. Well, really interesting results. They found that people that had a higher VO2 max had a higher species richness, meaning they had more diverse microbiomes. Okay, so does that automatically mean people that have a higher VO2 max have more diverse microbiomes? Not necessarily, but it's kind of pointing that way. In fact, we found that the predictive power of VO2 max was more powerful than looking at someone's diet, which is exactly like I said in the beginning. It's easier to look at someone's VO2 max and predict they have a good microbiome than it is to look at their diet because you can do all kinds of things to mess up a good diet as far as your microbiome is concerned. But it looks like the VO2 max has a very, very good strong indicator with how good someone's microbiome is. The other thing is you saw a very strong correlation between VO2 max and butyrate production. Butyrate is a short chain fatty acid. Okay, so butyrate is a byproduct of having good bacteria. Okay, good bacteria in our gut break down fibers into what is called butyrate, short chain fatty acid. Well, that butyrate has a very powerful effect at modulating inflammation, but also expressing genes, also improving cognitive function. Butyrate, it's important, okay? I've gone so far as saying like, that is why fiber is so important because we need these short chain fatty acids. They are signaling devices that signal changes in the body. They are a catalyst for so many things. So high VO2 max shows high butyrate production, probably has something to do with the bacteria that's in the gut. As an athlete, as someone that's trying to always perform better and have the highest level of fitness, I, for one, am putting a lot of stock in my microbiome, more stock in my microbiome than probably anything else right now. And that's just me. You can take it for what it's worth, but that's how I'm looking at things because the science is clearly pointing that way and it's the most stones that we haven't unturned yet. But if you still don't believe me because I'm just some weirdo on the internet, there's an interesting study that was published in the American Journal of Physiology, Endocrinology, and Metabolism. It took a look at mice and it put mice on antibiotics, okay? It found when the mice went on antibiotics, they had a lesser amount of short chain fatty acids, okay, things like butyrate, acetate, propionate, and their performance decreased significantly. Bummer, poor mice, okay? But then the other mice that didn't go on antibiotics maintained performance. So then they took the mice that were on antibiotics, they said, let's just give you guys direct infusions of acetate, short chain fatty acids. Guess what? Performance improved, boom, right back, with the short chain fatty acid that would normally be produced by the bacteria. But in order to like make this all make sense, they said, well, let's also transplant the good bacteria from the mice that didn't have antibiotics and put them into the mice that had the antibiotics. So they transplanted the bacteria. Guess what happened? The mice got their performance back. Okay, so our performance seems to be, and I'm gonna go out on a limb and say probably, is dictated a lot by our microbiome diversity and the species abundance, all the way down to how hard we can perform and how well we can do. So we couple that with diet, diet with high fiber, good probiotic supplementation, good exercise and lactate manipulation. Uh, I think we're starting to pave the way for huge, huge advancements in athletic performance. But again, I'm some dude on the internet with a few dogs. See you tomorrow.